today I am going to show you how to make this bracelet. It's going to be called Starlet Pearls. Thank you, Jose. He was on my Facebook page and helped me name it. And thank you for the name. I really appreciate it. This is what the bracelet looks like. I will show it to you on. But I wanted to show it to you open first here. And this is what it looks like. Now this is exactly seven and a half inches long. I show you how to make the bracelet this length, of course. If you decide that you need a larger bracelet, then you will make one more of your main units. If you need a shorter bracelet, like six and a half inches, then do one less unit. And just follow the tutorial as I do it, except for change the number of units. That's all you have to do to change the length. And as I said, this is seven and a half inches. It fits me perfectly. Let me put it on and I'll okay, show it to so you. So when you put this on, you want to do it at an angle. Start from the bottom of the pearls and just get a couple in. It's hard to do one-handed. When you take it off, it's really easy. But you just want to get them on and up and through the loop here. like so. And once it's on, it looks really good. It's really pretty. It's very stable. You can pull on it. You can shake your hand around. Nothing's going to happen. You just have to kind of finagle the pearls through. And that's what it looks like on the wrist. Very, very pretty. It's a little bit more of an advanced tutorial, but um, I'm sure you should be able to do it. So let's look at what we need to make this project. Okay, for this project today, we will be using 80, 110, and 150 seed beads. All three of these are a Toho, and all three of them are nickel plate. Then, you will be using a 4 millimeter and a 6 millimeter round glass pearl, or whatever you would like that's 4 and 6 millimeter round. Mine are glass pearls, and they're better color. Then you will be using a 4 millimeter bicone crystal. Mine is a Swarovski and it is Crystal Moonlight. You will also need some 8 pound nanofill or 6 pound fire line. You want to stay with the lighter pound of thread. You do not want to go with 8 pound fire line or 10 pound nanofill. Though you can try it. You will be filling these beads with a lot of thread, so with the lighter weight. 6 fire line, 8 pound nanofilm. I'm going to be using a size 10 beading needle. You may also consider a size 12 simply because we will be using 15 O seed beads and sometimes a 10 is hard to pass through them depending upon your seed beads. Go ahead and thread onto your needle a nice long length of thread. I'm going to start with a wingspan. Know that you will have to extend your fire line or nano fill during this project or tie on, whichever you prefer. Let's go ahead and okay, get started. To start this project, get out your 80 seed beads, whichever you have chosen for your 80, and then one of your four millimeter round pearls, or it can be any bead actually. This is just going to be a stop bead. We're going to put the stop bead on, bring it down to the end of our thread. Now, if you do not want to extend your fire line or your nano fill to make a clasp at the end of your project, then you'll want to leave about a 14 to 16 inch tail. If you don't mind extending your fire line or nano fill, then just leave 3-4 inches so you have enough to extend it, which is what I'm going to do so that you don't have to watch me work around a huge long tail. And I recommend that too because it's difficult to work around a long tail. Now we've put our pearl on our thread. I've brought it down to about 4 inches away from the tail, 3-4 inches, and then I'm going to come back through it and just loop my thread around it and this will create my stop bead like so. Now to do this project we're going to be doing square stitch. <clears throat> In some places it's modified but it is going to be a square stitch. It's the best stitch, the most secure stitch for this. I tried several others. We're going to start with nine beads. So go ahead and pick up nine beads onto your needle 
<clears throat> like so, and then bring them down to your stop bead. Arrange your hands to where your stop bead is towards your body and the top last bead you put on is away from you. Pick up one bead. Hold your other beads in your hand like so. Then pick up one bead and from the stop bead side go up into that last bead that you put on. And pull this the thread through until this bead lays next to that top bead right there. Let's get you a little closer. And then just because this is my first stitch, I want to secure it so that everything is a little less mobile. So I'm going to go back into, I'm coming out of the top bead here, I'm going to go back into the bead I added. <clears throat> Pull my thread through. And then go back into that top bead. From the side with the stop bead. And then I'm going to go back down toward me into the bead I just added. That's my first stitch. Now I'm going to pick up another of my 80 seed beads. I'm going to go into the bottom, which is the side towards the stop bead, of the next bead, like so. I'm going to pull my thread through until my new bead lays next to that second bead I'm coming out of, like so. And then back down into my new bead. Towards, you're going to go down towards the stop bead. And pull. Let's give it a little tug. These are not going to be com very, really neat and perfect, but that's okay. You want them to be secure, but don't worry about them being perfect at this point. Pick up another 8 go into the next bead on your strand that you created in your first step. Go up, so you're going through on the side of the stop bead. Pull your bead up. If you put your thumb and your finger together and hold them, they come through a lot cleaner. Now, cross your thread over. As you get more beads, you kind of have to cross your thread over to make sure that as you pull your thread through, it goes between the beads. Now go back down into your new bead, pull your thread through, and guide your thread between those beads and give a little tug. Now, I'm going to back off just slightly, and I'm going to pick up another 80 seed bead. I am then going to go into the next bead and pull. Let's see my tail is already getting in the way. And you can see what I just did. I went in the wrong direction. So if you go into the wrong direction you're not going to get your stitch. So I'm going to leave that just so you can see what happens when you go the wrong direction. So when you add your next bead, go up through the bead on the strand that you created in the first step. So you want to always go from the side of the stop bead up. And then back down through your new bead. <clears throat> and then again, pick up an 8 go through the bottom of the next bead. Crush thread over and go through the top of the new bead. And again, go through the bottom of the existing bead or the previous row, whatever you want to call it, and then through the top of the new bead. bottom of the existing bead, pull it in, crush it thread over, top of the new bead.
bottom. Make sure your thread is between the beads and then go through the top. <clears throat> now we're going to do our last one. So pick up your bead, go through the bottom, and just kind of hold on to your stop bead. Pull your thread through, and then go through the top of that new bead. And give a nice little tug, and then just pull your stop bead off, like so. Now, to secure these beads, they're together, but they're not very secure. So what we do now is we're coming out of this row here. We're going to go to the previous row. Just ignore your tail and go through all of these beads. So go through all nine of them. And then pull your thread through. Give a little tug. And then now we're coming out of this column. We're going to go into this column and go through all nine beads. And pull. And now you can see that straightens my beads up somewhat. And it secures them. And just because I'm going to be working off this row a lot, I'm going to do that one more time. So I'm going to go up through these beads. You don't necessarily have to do this, but I feel like it kind of makes my um, piece a little stronger and a little neater. So I'm going to do it one more time. And that's what your piece should look like. Now, we're coming out of the bottom of this row here. We're going to work our way up, but we're only going to go up three beads. So this row, we are going to decrease and just go through this bead, this bead, and this bead. Let me get you close. And now you're going to pick up an 8 seed bead. You're coming out of this bottom bead. You're going to go into the top of that bottom bead and pull your new bead down. And then you're going to go up through that new bead, like so. Pull your thread through. Put your thumb in your finger. Put a little tension on it. Pull your thread through and then give it a tiny tug. That will get your tension for you. And then pick up another 8 seed bead. You're going to go into the next bead. So through the top of the next bead. Like so. And pull. There is no active call. And then go up through the bottom of that bead. My Alexa, while I'm videotaping, likes to talk to me and scare me, so if I jump, it's because of Alexa. She likes to talk out of the blue. Pick up your next bead, go down into the next bead on your previous row, and pull. And then go up through the bottom of that new bead, right there. Make sure the thread goes down in between them. And now we have finished this row. What we have to do now is secure it. So every time you make a row, you have to go to the previous row and go through it and then go back to the um, new row and go through it. So since we've only gone through three, we're not going to go all the way up to the top of this row. We're just going to go into these three. We're coming out here. We're going to go into these three. And then we're going to pull our thread through and then we're going to go back up our new row right here and pull the thread through and then we are going to now work our way down this way and make another row of three we will count this row this row and of course this row we're going to count from here over and we're going to have nine rows so we're going to make six or excuse me not nine rows six rows so we're going to make three more rows of three here so nine down six across 
Let's begin. Pick up an 8-O seed bead. You're coming out here. Go to the bottom of that bead and pull your new bead down. And then go down into that bead. And then pick up another bead. Go up through the bottom of the next bead in your row. If your first bead gets all weird, don't worry about it because as you pull this one down, it'll straighten out some and then when we sew through them on the second step, that will line them up. And again, pick up another bead, go through the top of this bead, and there again, I did it wrong, go through the bottom. So. This stitch, for some reason, confuses me, so go up through the bottom of this one, and then pull your bead down, and then go down through the top of it. And then go back into the previous row, go through all three of them, and then down in your new row, go through all three of those. And now we will work our way back up. Pick up a bead. Go through the top of the next bead. And then back through it. Pick up a bead. Go through the top of the next bead. I'm going to get close for just a few. Just so I can make sure that you know what's going on here and then back through the top of it. Pick up a bead, go down through the previous bead, up through the top bead. Then we're going to go into the previous row and back into the row we just created. Now you can see I have five rows. I need to make one more row. So we'll have six across the bottom. And then I'm going to pick up my 8 o seed bead. I'm going to go into the bottom of this bead because now I'm working my way down. So it reverses. And then down into that new bead. Go through the bottom of the next bead, and then down through that new bead. So as you're going up and down, the way you put it in just reverses. Now, pick up a bead, go through the top of the next bead, No, go through the bottom of the next bead. You guys are going to think I'm just really a quack here. Go through the bottom of the next bead and then down. Okay, then we're going to go up through this one and down through this one. Now we need to get our thread back up and over so that we can make our column of nine here. So we're going to go, we're coming out of this column here, we're going to go through just two in this column right here. Let's go through two of them. Cross over and then go into one on the top one on the outside row here. Just make sure your thread pulls down between those beads like so. Now we're going to build our way up. So pick up two beads this time and then go into the top bead down towards your stop bead or you don't have a stop bead anymore but down towards you and then go up two beads. Cross your thread over directly into the bead right next to where you're coming out of and go through the top two, kind of like herringbone. And then we're going to secure this stitch. 
So we're going to go over to this side here, just cross over, and then cross over again and go up the new beads on the outside, like so. So we're doing a herringbone and then we're turning it into a square stitch is basically what we're doing. It's a bit of a modification, but it works very well this way. So pick up two, you're coming out of this bead, go down into this bead. Pull the new two down. Bring your thread directly across and go into the bead directly across from where you're coming out of and then up through the new bead. You're coming out of this new bead here. Go across into the other new bead. Down. And then go up into the outside new bead. And now you have another square stitch made. Again, pick up two, go into the bead next to the one you're coming out of, cross your thread over, then go into two beads on the outside. Then cross over, go down into the other new bead, and then back up into the one you started in. like so. And again, so let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We want to have a total of nine, so we need three more units. So let's pick up two eight o seed beads, go down into the bead next to the one you're coming out of, cross over, and go up into two beads. cross over, go down into the inside bead and up through the outside bead, and pull. Two more 8 seed beads, go down into the bead next to the one you're coming out of, up into two. Cross over, so down through the inside bead and up through the outside bead. Pick up two. Let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yep. Pick up two, go down into the bead next to the one you're coming out of cross over, go up into two, pull your thread through, cross over into the inside bead, going down, and then go up into the outside bead. Now we have two rows of nine bead square stitch but we have to secure these two even though these are firmer than those were because of the manner of um, the way we did the stitch we still need to do our next step so we're coming out of this column we're going to go into the inside column making sure we don't miss any of the beads and go all the way through and watch your thread because it'll want to tangle Okay, so there we go. Pull your thread through. So every mistake you can make today, I guess I'm going to make that one. Just so you guys can see that <laughs> I mess up a lot. And then we're going to cross over. We're coming down through all of these. I didn't miss any of the beads. I'm going to cross over and go through all of these. And pull my thread through. Now we have to make the inside section here. So we have four rows already. We're just going to go down three, but we already have one, two, three, four. So we only have to make two rows. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew down from this 
one that we're coming out of, we're going to sew down three beads on the inside column here, and we're going to exit. And then we're going to do a row of three, working our way up. So pick up a NATO seed bead, and I'm going to turn this this way just so that I can handle it a little better. And um, have it more accessible to my right hand. So now it's upside down here, but I'm still going to work my way up, basically. So I'm coming out of this third bead right here. I have an 8 seed bead. I'm going to go into the bottom of this bead, or the opposite side from which I'm coming out of, and then I'm going to cross my thread over and go back down into my new bead. I recommend you turn your piece over too so that it's not confusing to you. Now pick up another 8 seed bead, go up into the next bead on your piece, pull your new bead down, then go down into it crossing your thread over, put your thumb over it and make sure your thread goes down between, give it a little tug, and then again up into this bead, pull this bead down, and go down into your new bead. We've finished this row, so now we have to secure it. So we're going to cross over into this column and go up through three beads and exit right here. Pull your thread through those three beads, and then go down the new three beads that we just created. Now with this column here, the next one, it needs to attach to both of these two columns. And so this is how you're going to do this one. Pick up an 8 seed bead. You're coming out of this bead here. Go down through the top of it and pull this bead down. And then go up through the top of that, or go back into that bead, pointing up away from you. And then Try to give it a little tug, then bring this one over here and go down into it, and then back up into this one, and it'll straighten it out. So you're just sewing around and then going this way and sewing around. And that will pull the two columns together, like so. Pick up your next bead, go into the top of this next bead, pull your bead down, and then go through the bottom of that bead, and then go into the top of the bead on the opposite, on the other side. So just go down through this bead right here. Pull your thread through. And then up through the bead you're attaching. Pick up your next 8 seed bead. Go down through the next bead on the left side. And then up through the bottom of that bead. You may have to straighten your bead out as you do it. Now we're going to go over to the right hand column, go down through the top of that third bead in that right hand column there. pull the thread through, and then go back up through the bead we're attaching, like so. Now we have to secure all three of these. So we're coming out here, we're going to go down into this column here on the left side, and pull. We're going to go up into the column we just created. Then we're going to go down into the column we attach to on the right hand side. 
and then we're just going to sew through all nine beads over here. Just go all the way up this entire column. Make sure you don't miss any. And you should be coming out right where your tail is. And this is what we have created. Now I'm staying with you a lot on this because there's a lot of steps. I will do the first two units fully so that you can see how to do this and then we'll do everything to length. It's going to be a little bit of a longer video but I feel that if I don't do that I'm going to have a lot of people lost. So now we are going to embellish this. So what you need now is some 15 o seed beads and some bicone crystals. It's a fairly simple embellishment. We're going to use three beads to embellish with and we're going to go through three beads. So let me show you what I mean. Pick up a 15 o seed bead. Let me untangle my thread here. 15 o bicone crystal, 15 o like so. You're coming out of this top bead here. You're going to count down three, including the one you're in. One, two, three. And you're going to go into the bottom of that third bead. And then you're going to go through all three beads. And you're going to pull your crystal down. And get your tail all tangled in it. Like so. You back up just a little bit. Okay. So now we're coming out of the column we started in. We're going to go into the column right next to the one that we're coming out of. And we're going to go down three beads and we're going to exit. So what we're doing is we're going to center this embellishment between two columns of three. So we're going to center it between these two columns. Now we're going to pick up a 15 O seed bead. We're going to go back into just the bicone crystal right here and pull and then we're going to pick up a 15 o seed bead and we're going to go back into that second column that we started in and then we're going to go down three more beads so we're going to go down these three and then the next three and pull tight Make sure your embellishment looks good. It's tight. Your 15 O's are next to each other, not on top of each other. Everything looks really good because at this point, this is how your bicone crystal is going to stay. So you want to, um, before you do your next stitch, you want to make sure that this stitch looks really nice. Your embellishment looks really good. Pick up a 15 O, a bicone crystal, a 15 O, and then we're going to go back into the third bead on the top here. So count up three, including the one you're in. One, two, three. And then we're going to go into that third bead and back through all three of them, like so. And pull the crystal down. Now you're going to have to guide it so that it goes where you want it to, like this. I'm going to get you really close so you can see exactly how mine is positioned. And then we are coming out of this column here. After you've put on your bicone crystal, you always have to go into the next column. So don't forget that because if you do, your bicone crystal will not be centered between the two. So now we're going to go into the next column of three and exit. Go up three beads, exit. Give it a, a nice little tug. Make sure I can quit tangling. Make sure your crystal is right where you want it. Like so. And then pick up a 15 O seed bead. Go through the bicone crystal. Put your thumb on top of the crystal. Pull your thread through. Pop that 15 O seed bead down in between. Right there. And then pick up another 15 O seed bead. And go back up into your column you just came out of, right here. Okay, make sure that your bicone crystal looks good, your 15 O's are good, and now we have to cross over and travel back down. So what we're going to do is make sure that this thread goes between the 15 O seed beads, and then as we pull it, it will also go down between the square stitch. So go into these 
three beads here and the three beads underneath them like so. So I'm going through six beads and as I do this I'm going to try to show you without holding my thumb over it. Pull your thread to where it goes down in between the 15 O's and between the square stitch right there. Make sure that your embellishment looks good, feels good, it's tight, the whole nine yards. And then pick up a 15 O seed bead, pick up a bicone crystal, pick up a 15 O seed bead, and then go back into the opposite side of the three beads you're coming out of. And pull your thread through. Pick up a 15 0 seed bead, go into your, or excuse me, go into the next row, always go into the next row, your next column of square stitch first. And then pick up a 15 0 seed bead, go into the crystal, make sure I'm in frame here. And then pick up a 15 0 seed bead and go back up that column that you just came out, um, through on the outside here. Pull your 15 0 tight, cross over, go into the column on the inside here through all three beads. Make sure your thread goes between all of the beads here goes down between those 15 O's, not on top of them, doesn't tangle in them, all that stuff. Now we're going to go into the next column right here. Pick up a 15 O seed bead, a bicone crystal, a 15 O seed bead, and go into the opposite side of the column you're coming out of. Then go into the next column. And again, pick up a 15 0 seed bead, go into your bicone crystal, pick up a 15 0 seed bead, and go back into the column that you were just coming out of, the second column there. And then arrange everything, make sure it looks nice, and go into the next three beads right here. Pull your thread through and go ahead and put your next crystal on. Work your way up just like you worked your way down here and then work your way to the side. So there will be three crystals across the bottom because you're working in two columns. You have six columns. There will be three crystals. So don't get confused and attach a crystal in between these two and then attach one from here to here. Always make sure that you're in two columns and then you move over and go into two columns so that you're centering between two. You, like I said, you'll have three crystals this way, three crystals on this side, and three. So all the way around, it'll be very symmetrical. Go ahead and finish embellishing that and we'll be back. Okay, I just wanted to show you after embellishing this last crystal here, I'm coming out of this column here. I'm going to cross over and go through six beads here. So just always try to find a path. So if you're coming out of the end, all you have to do is cross over into the next column. Pull your thread through and then do your next embellishment here. Okay, so I've just put on my last embellishment. I worked my way all the way around. And I've just put on my last embellishment and I'm coming out of this center one right here. Now I'm going to go up through this center other one to the right here. So just hop over next column so that you come in towards the inside of your piece and exit. Now we're going to do the center embellishment. So what we will need this time is a six millimeter round glass and some 15 O's. So 
pick up a 15 0 seed bead, a 6 millimeter round glass bead, pearl, whatever you're using, and a 15 0. Now I'm coming out of this column right here on the right side of this embellishment. I'm coming out of the right column and I'm going to go directly up into the right column on the opposite unit right here. So straight through and I'm just going to pull this bead down and into the center like so. Then I'm going to cross over into the left column right next to the one I'm coming out of and pull my thread through. Then I'm going to pick up a 15-0 seed bead. I'm going to go down into the center of the pearl and exit. I'm just going to put my thumb over everything and watch my thread, make sure it doesn't tangle on the previous 15-0 or the 15-0s around the crystal or anything. The crystals, nothing. Just want it to go through cleanly. And then pick up a 15 0 seed bead and then you're going to want to go into the left column here on the one you started in. Now you want to go into the column next to the column you started in right here and again watch your thread make sure everything pulls through beautifully and pop that 15 0 down in there and now we have our first unit and it turns out really pretty. It looks really pretty. Now we're going to do our next step, which can be a little tricky. So what we're going to do is we're going to work our way over to the other side so that our tail, we're on our tail side now. So first you're in this column here. Grab a hold of the column that has nine. Turn, turn your piece over. The tail is here. Our thread is coming out of the center one here. We're going to go into this one with nine and we're going to sew through all of them. Just kind of manipulate your needle around and get through all of them. Make sure that you're in the center of every single bead and pull. And I actually, I'm going to back out of one if I can. So you'll just want to go up actually eight of them. Just go up all of them except for one and exit. And then go into the outside one right here. Sorry about that. My instructions aren't very clear today. I'm kind of not doing very well. Okay. Now we're going to turn this over. And this is kind of the tricky part here. And I'm going to stay with you through most all of this. So, until we get to the embellishments again. So, this is what we're going to do. We're going to use some 11 0 seed beads now, and some 8 0s, and some 4 millimeter round um, pearls. So, get your 4 millimeter rounds out. And what I want you to do is pick up an 11 0 seed bead and then an 8 0 seed bead, or excuse me, 11 0 seed bead, a 4 millimeter round pearl, and it's got to be in this order. So 11 0, 4 millimeter round, 11 0, 2 8 0s, and an 11 0. So let's look at that. 11 0, 4 millimeter round, 11 0, 2 8 0s, and an 11 0. Drop these down, and then you're going to come just back through the pearl. So hold on to your pearl like so and pull and your beads will just flop around with the whole sides up like so. If they don't, arrange them so that they look like this but they should guide right down in there just like that. Now pick up an 11 0 seed bead. Turn your piece over and just go down into the first 8 0 seed bead in your square stitch. The one right next to the one you started in. So you're anchored here, go into the next one and pull. And once we put our next stitch in, this will be a lot neater, but that's what that should look like. 
I'm just going to stay on the back side now. And we're going to go into the next 8-0 in the square stitch. So we're coming out of this one. Now we're going to go up into this one right here. And the back of my piece looks a little bobbly, but once we get it all put together, it turns out really pretty neat. And the inside looks nice too, so don't worry about that. Then pick up an 11-0 seed bead, a 4 millimeter round, an 11-0 seed bead, and two 8-0s. Drop these down. Go back through just the pearl. Excuse me. You need two 8 0s and, and then an 11 0. So we need an 11 0, a 4 millimeter round, an 11 0, two 8 0s, and an 11 0. And then go back through the pearl and pull. And that's what that should look like. They should just flip around so that all the beads are whole up. Pick up an 11-0 and go into the next square stitch 8-0. Like so. And pull. And then go over to the next square stitch right here. The next 8 0, go up through it. And we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to pick up an 11 0, a 4 millimeter round, an 11 0, and two 8 0 seed beads, and then an 11 0, like so. We're going to drop this down. And now I'm going to back up just slightly. And I'm going to come back through just my pearl. And pull all my beads up. Make sure that they're all laying the way I want them to. And pick up an 11-0 seed bead. And then I'm going to go through two of my Eightos here on the outside, like so. Now you're going to cross over and go into the eight-o seed bead right next to the one you're coming out of, right here. Pull your thread through, and then you're going to go into. You're going to go across and go into the top eight-o on the outside here. You also want to go into, if you can all at once, you want to go into that 11-0, the pearl, the 11-0 to the outside of the pearl over here, and the 8-0, just like so, and pull this thread through. Okay, so now I've mangled my piece sufficiently. I'm going to straighten it back out so it looks pretty. And this is where you should be coming out of this 80 seed bead right here. Now at this point, I am going to go ahead and extend my fire line. If you would like to at this point, this is a really good point to do it because then your little extension knot will go through the next step really well because there's no 15 O's involved and it'll work great. So I'm going to extend and then I will be back. If you do not know how to extend your fire line or your nano fill, check out GGC's Beginning Beaters video number four. It is labeled video number four, and I will put a link down below in the description box so that you can do that. After we've done that, we'll be okay. back. So I have extended my fire line, and we're coming out of this bead right here. Now we have to join all of these beads together so that they'll be in the form of a um, square stitch. So we're coming out of the top of this one. We're going to go directly into the one right next to it. Ignore the 11 0 underneath it. Just go down into the 8 0. Move some stuff here so that my thread doesn't get caught. And pull your thread through. Now I've got a long amount of thread so excuse me while I pull it through and then 
go bring your thread uh, under and between the 11 O's and the 8 O's and go into the outside bead. And then go back into the inside bead from the top of the bead, that is. And then go down into or up into the next bead. So you're coming, your thread is coming out this way. You're going to go up this way into the next bead right here. Then we're going to go down into this bead here. So we're coming out of the top here, go down here. We're just sewing them together in a circle basically. So now back up into the bead we started in. So I've just created a circle with my thread. They're not going to be perfect, but get them as straight as you can, as tight as you can, and as neat as you can. Now you're coming out here, go into the next one. And then up into the one you just started in. and then down into the one over to the left here. Then go to the next bead, go up through it. Go down into the one you started in. And then into the bead you're connecting to the one you started in. And then over to the last bead. Up through the bead towards the inside. And then back down. and then back up, just like so. Now we're coming out of this middle bead, and that's okay. We're going to build our next um, nine square stitch from the inside here. It doesn't matter which side you're coming out of. Since we're coming out of the inside, that's the way we're going to do it, instead of having to sew around and try to get our bead out through the outside one. It doesn't really matter at this point. So get some 8 seed beads out. And we're going to begin by picking up two 8 seed beads. We're coming out of this bead. I better get a little closer, I think. We're coming out of this bead right here. We're going to go down into the bead next to it on the outside here. Because we're going to build our two columns on the outside. Like so. Pull your beads up tight and then go you're coming out of this bottom bead, go up through two on the inside here. Pull your thread through, tighten it, and then you're coming out of this bead, you're going to go into the outside bead, just the top bead, and then back up through the inside bead. Now we have a square stitch. Pick up two 8 seed beads. You're coming out of this inside bead. Go into just the outside bead. Go down into it. Pull the beads down. Make sure they position properly. Then cross your thread over and go up through two beads on the inside. and then cross over, go through just the top outside bead, and then go back up through the inside bead. Continue doing this until you have nine double units. 
So you'll have 18 beads all together. You'll have nine on the outside. Just count the outside row. Make sure you have nine rows and we'll be back. Okay, so I have made my nine units or my nine double units, two rows of nine basically. And <clears throat> I'm coming out of my top row here and we have to secure it. So we're coming out of this one. We're going to go through all nine here like so. Just skip that 11 O right on top of the pearl and go through the first eight O's and then again skip the 11 O on the other side go all the way up through and if you feel like you need to do that again to secure it even tighter then you can but at this point I'm just going to go ahead and start making my square stitch <clears throat> three rows deep this way. So I'm going to begin with an 8 seed bead, go underneath or to the bottom of the bead that I'm coming out of, to the opposite side that you're coming out of, go through that, and then go down through the top of my new bead. And again, pick up another one, go into the second bead from the bottom, and then into the top like so and then again underneath the third bead pull the bead tight go through the top of it oops and now I have my row of three and I have to secure it. So I'm going to go over to this row. I'm coming out of this um, column. I'm going to go into the third bead on that column and up through all three. Back down through these three. And now I have to work my way up doing the same thing. So just like we did on the other unit. Now we're going to go through the top of that bead and pull this one down. And then go through it. And we're going to do this until we have six rows across counting these two here so I've got three rows now I need to make three more after you've made those three rows we'll be back okay so I have made my three rows I sewed back through the two columns to secure and now I'm coming out of the top of this column so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into this column and I'm just going to turn my piece around like so and I'm going to build this way now so I'm coming out of this bead here I'm going to pick up two I'm going to go into the bead next to the one I'm coming out of through the top of it then back up into two on this side so holding it so you can see it is a little difficult for me but there we go like so and then I'm going to go into the bead that on the outside and then back up through the bead on the inside on the two new beads I just put on and turn it into a square stitch now all together we need nine nine beads in our rows here so we've got one two three four and then we've got five here so we need to just make four more rows and then attach the fourth to this one so we're just going to continue making the double row pick up two beads go down through the outside bead on the top of your last row and then back up through two on the inside and then back down into the outside back up into the inside bead and do that three more times and then we will connect so we just want to make sure we end up with nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, we need three more. 
and we'll do okay, that. Okay, so I'm ready to make my eighth unit and then attach it to my ninth. So I've got my two beads. I'm going to go down into the outside bead, just like I've been doing. Just make my stitch like I normally would. Go up through the two inside stitches, or beads, that is. Then secure these two beads together. Just like we've been doing. This is getting awkward to hold where you can see it. And then, now I need to attach these beads together. So let's get really close. So I'm coming out of this inside bead right here. I'm going to go up into the inside bead on the two that are attached to the two 11 O's and just ignore the 11 O's, go through that 8 O and pull. I'm going to turn it, cross into the outside 8 O and pick up the outside 8 O of the unit I just created. <clears throat> oh, great. Geez, you guys, this one is just arguing and arguing with me. Okay, so I just went from this bead to this bead. Now I'm going to go across and go into the two inside beads again. And I'll do that one more time. Just to make sure they're secured well. Okay. So now we need to get over to this bead. So we're going to go through this side one more time. And if it looks a little thready right there, don't worry about it. We're going to embellish it. So it's not something you need to worry about. Now we're going to go, coming out of this bead, we're going to go down into this bead right here. Then, <clears throat> I'm going to turn it this way just so I can get to it better. Now we're coming out of the speed right here. So we are going to pick up an 8 seed bead. I hope I was in frame. I was so close. I hope I was in frame when I did that. Now we're going to go into the bottom of this bead right here. And then go pull our thread through, pull that bead down, and then go into the top of it and pull your thread through. Pick up another 8 seed bead, go into the bottom of this bead here, the inside row of your two outside rows there, and pull like so. Then go down into that bead. Now you have to secure them. So you're going to go, you're coming out of this row here, we're going to go up through all three of these beads right here and pull through. And then we're going to go into the top of this bead here and connect it to the two that we made on our new row here and pull your thread through, like so. Okay, so now we're coming out of this bead here, and we're going to do the same thing. Pick up an 8 seed bead, and we're going to build our next column. So this is our third column, which needs to attach to this one, too. So what we're going to do is come through this one, and then back through the top and then pick up another one and go through the next one come back through the top and then come back through the um, top 8 seed bead right here. Pull this tight. 
sew through the previous row sew through this row and now we're going to attach this row to this row. Now like we did down here we could have done it all at once but up here it's a little bit more confusing to do that. So just go down two beads. This one's already attached to this one. Go down two beads go up through the bottom of the second bead here. Let's make sure you can see and then down through the bead that we started in. Sew them together. And then go down into the next bead. Go up into this bead here. And then sew this one together. And now we have to connect these two rows together with our final stitch. So go th up through these three here and then go through all of these here and then come back up through the outside row and then begin embellishing just like we did this one. So I'll do the first embellishment here. And you can see it looked like it was going to be really messy. Now you can see it's nice and neat. I straightened it out with those last stitches. That's what makes this stitch look good. So don't forget to sew up through your columns in your last stitch. Pick up a 15-0, a bicone crystal, and a 15-0. Go down three beads, you're coming out of this one, go into the bottom of this one, and up through all three. Pull your thread through. Go into the next column, go down three beads, like so. Pull. Pick up a 15-0. Go through the crystal, pick up a 15-0, go back through that column you were in, pull this tight, arrange it, make sure it looks nice. Want both your 15-0s to lay nice, your crystal to lay nice, pull it tight, and then sew up through the next column. And instead of going down this way, this time we're going to go across this way. And it doesn't really matter as long as you go through your three beads and you put three on top here, three down here, this way, and this way. So I actually going across the top this way and then working your way down is a little bit easier. So we just pick up our next series of beads. 15-0, bicone crystal, 15-0, go through this column. and then pop into the next column and continue and just go ahead and finish your entire embellishment put your bead through the middle and then come through and do your connecting pearls and then make your next unit and continue doing that until you have six full units with your extensions of your pearls in between your connections and then after you make your sixth unit, go ahead and make your pearl extensions here for your next connection. This last unit, we're going to make just a little We're going to go from this bead over to this one. And then we're going to go up into this one. And we're going to just connect them just like we have been the entire time making all of our units. Go down into this one. Let me get you closer. And then back into this one. And then I'll pull my thread tight so it doesn't look quite so messy. This top row is always a little wonky or weird looking, I guess you would say. Doesn't really matter. Come out of this one into this one because we'll straighten it up when we put our next row on there. Just get it as neat as you can.
then go from the, that one into the next one. I'm basically just sewing circles and connecting the beads together is what we're doing. Here. Down into this one. And then back up into this one. And now that I have my first row there, I can begin my row of nine. So just pick up your two 80 seed beads, go into the opposite bead, and then go up through two, crossing over. And then connect those two together. If I can get back in there. Just like we've been doing. So go ahead and continue doing this row until you have nine, including this first one that we made attached to the pearls here. So continue making your nine stitches, so up and down through it, and then um, we'll be back. Okay, so as you can see, I've made my nine units here, and now I just need to secure them. So I'm coming out of this one. I'm going to go down into all nine on this side. And then up through all nine on the inside column. And because this is my last unit and it's going to be part of my clasping, I'm going to do that one more time just to make sure that it's nice and secure. So I go through all of them on the first column and then all of them on the second column. And then I'm now coming out of this one right here and I'm going to start to build my sideways columns but this time we're only going to go two beads deep instead of three just to make a bigger opening for our clasping. So I'm coming out of the top there, I'm going to go into the bottom of that bead or the opposite side from which my thread is coming out of and pull this bead down. Then I'm going to go through that bead and then I will pick up another bead, go into the second bead here, and of course I pulled them tight now so it's going to take me a second to get through it. And pull. And then now I have my next column, two beads. So I'm going to go, I'm coming out of, make sure you come out of the top one, I seem to not go through both of these when I came through. So now I need to go through this one. <laughs> okay, go through there. There we go. I'll pull them tight. And then I'm just going to go through these two. And then back through these two to finish my stitch. And then <clears throat> I will begin again by going back through these two. And now I have to work my way up. So I'll pick up a bead. Sorry, I keep turning it. It's kind of awkward now that it's so long. And I'm going to go back through this bead right here. And then back up through this one. And then pick up another one and go through this one just like we've been doing except for now we're just making two beads deep instead of three back into that bead and then into this column and then into this column 
Now we need to make two more columns of two. So go ahead and make two more columns of two and then work your way back down into your last column just like we've been doing on the other units. So two columns sideways, then do your column of two all the way down, making eight beads and then connecting the ninth here. And after we've done that, we'll be back. Okay, so I have made my eight units. My ninth unit is here. <clears throat> Let's get a little closer and we'll attach that. And then we'll make one more row across. And then we will embellish this. So we're coming out of this bead here. We're going to go up into this one right underneath the pearl and just avoid the 11 0 and come into it and then cross over to the one next to it. Now mine's laying kind of funny, so I have to make sure I go through it the proper way. It's at a funny angle, but I will be pulling it straight doing this, so I need to go through it properly. And then <clears throat> back down into this one here, like so. And I'll just pull them up tight, and then I'll go through those again. So I'm going to go back across into both of these beads here, like so. And then cross over again, and back into these two. Now I need to sew through my entire two columns. So I'm going to go ahead and cross over again. Make sure your thread is tight because you don't want a whole bunch showing underneath those 11 O's. And because of the way we're doing this, it can be rather thready. So pull tight and pull those um, thread bridges tight. Now I'm going to go down through all of these beads here. then back up through all of these here. If you want to do that again, you can, but I feel like it's pretty secure. Plus, <clears throat> I'm getting, I don't want too much thread under there, so. Now I'm going to go back into just two beads here. So I'm crossing my thread over and going into these first two beads my needle through once I get my thread to stop arguing with me. There we go. And then tangling on my crystals. Now I'm going to pick up a bead. I'm coming out of this bead here. I need to go back into it from the top of it. This last unit is pretty secure because I want it to be really firm so if you go to the outside edges, usually you can get through them a little better. There, well, no, I didn't get it. There, I got it. Just be patient, you'll, you'll get it. It's just, the beads are tight now. And that's what we want, so. Now I've attached this bead, I have to go up through it and the one on top of it, here. Pull my thread through. Then I have to go through these two on this side, pull, and back through these two. And now I'm going to come down through this bead here. Pick up an 8 seed bead, go through the bottom of this bead, if I can. and then through the top bead, well actually, yeah, I'm gonna go through the top bead here. Pull this tight, then go down through these two beads here, and back up through, let me pull my thread tighter, back up through, and you can see how that's straightening out my unit now. It was all funny looking. Now it looks pretty good. Now I have to attach this bead down here because it's not attached to this side. So I'm going to go down this column <clears throat> into this bead here pull my thread through go back into the top of that bead that I'm coming out of pull my thread through and then into these two beads here 
pull back into the two here and pull. Now this one we're not going to put a pearl in the center and our embellishments are going to be just a little different on the center unit because we don't have three beads to work through, we have two. But we're going to start by going over to the side here. So go through the next two beads. <clears throat> I'm going to turn my piece and then I'm going to go through these two, three beads here. So on the side, we're still going to go through three beads to do our embellishment. Now we're going to pick up a 15 0 and a bicone crystal and a 15 0. <clears throat> and come here, come here. I'm tracing that 15 0 all over the place. Drop this down. And we're going to do what we've been doing, extra piece of thread in there, and go back into the column that we just came out of, three beads deep, and exit the third bead, just like that. Pull your thread through, and then go into the next column. So these three beads right here, go up through them. Exit the last one. Make sure your needle is going through all of them. Yep. Pull. Pick up a 15 0 seed bead. Go down through the crystal. Pick up a 15 0 seed bead. Come back through this inside column, three beads deep. like so. And now we're going to put this center embellishment on so you can see how to do that. So go into this first column right here. Okay, so now we're coming out of this column here. Get a little bit closer. And we're going to pick up a 15 0 seed bead, a bicone crystal, and a 15 0 seed bead. And we're just going to go into the very next column, right next to where we're coming out of, on the same side. Just go into this column right here and pull. Now this is going to lay our embellishment sideways. So now, instead of going into another column, we're just going to stay where we're at. We're going to pick up a 15 O seed bead, go into the bicone crystal, pull your embellishment over the top, and straighten it out. Pick up another 15 0 and go down into the column we started in, right here. And pull this embellishment tight and straighten it out so it looks like this. Now go back into this column here. So you're coming out of this one, go into the one right next to it. Make sure you get both beads. My needle is bent and I'm having a hard time getting through. There we go. Now, <clears throat> we're going to go down into these two columns. Or these, yes, we're going to um, embellish these two columns, but we're going to go into the first one, three beads deep this time. And then we're going to do the same embellishment we did on the other side. So pick up one fifteen o one bicone crystal, 115O onto your needle, drop it down, go back into the column that you are in on the opposite side, three beads deep, and exit. Pull that crystal down and then go into the next column. Avoid the 11O on top. Pull, pick up a 15 0 seed bead, go down into the crystal, pick up a 15 0 seed bead, go back up into the column, pull, 
cross over, go back down into the inside column, and go six beads deep. So, right here, I want to exit. And you can tell if you can't count underneath there, you can tell because you'll just have three beads left on these two columns. So, just go down until you have three on both those columns. And then, begin your embellishment just like you did for the rest of them. Pick up a 15-0, a bicone crystal, a 15-0, go through the three um, eight O's again, cross over, Put your embellishment, or secure your embellishment on this side. Go back through your column, work down six beads, put your next one on, and then work over into two beads, put the embellishment on the same way you did this one, and then come up this side and embellish, and we'll be back. Okay, so and now you can see I have finished my clasping. How did I get that a little bit tighter there? And what I'm going to do is I'm coming out of this last bead after putting on my last embellishment, sewing my way back up to the top here, I'm going to go under this thread bridge, making sure my embellishments are really tight, and go under this thread bridge right here, and I am going to tie a knot. <clears throat> and then I'm going to flip this over, And then I'm going to go into, because I'm right here, I want to get back over here, I'm going to go into these two beads here. And then I'm going to cross over and go into these two beads here, so I can get back up through my last bead. So go into this one and this one here. Whoops. Let me get back in camera here back off just a little bit and pull my needle through. Now as you can see this is my clasping end and you can really see my thread here. So I'm going to do a little embellishment with 15 o seed beads just to kind of help that end look a little prettier. So I'm going to pick up, I'm coming out of this bead, I'm going to pick up two 15 o seed beads and then I'm going to go into the very next column and I'm going to turn it over just so that I can see where I'm going. Now you can go through just the top bead or you can go through both and it's going to be easier to go through both. Through this whole project, sometimes you may have to find another way to get through your beads because it's just kind of the way it works. Now you're coming through this one, come up through this one, the next two beads, pick up two more 15 seed beads. You can use three if you feel like you need three. It doesn't really matter. You can use an 11 or two, whatever you want. We're just covering the thread. Go back down into the column of two, push those beads up, cross over, and go into the next one. And if you want to, you can sew up through the previous one if you want to hold them all together, but I don't think I want to do that. I'm just going to go into the next one. So I'm just sewing in little circles around these columns. You can come up through your beads as you go through too if you want. Any way you can find to put a little end embellishment on it to cover those beads is fine. You don't have to do it exactly like I'm doing it. If you find a better way, great, do that.
So I'm just continuing, just sewing up through them, pulling these little beads over the top. Going to my last one here. I'm going to come up through here. Then I think I'm going to just go down through these last two here. Make sure I don't have my thread over the top of that, which I think I do. No, I don't. Okay. Straighten everything out. Look at it. Make sure it looks okay. Looks okay to me. And then I am going to just sew down a few more of these beads and tie a couple knots. So I'm going to exit a few here. I'm going to go into the center thread bridge, grab a hold of it right here, tie a knot, and then go down through a few more. Make sure your embellishment is nice and tight, looks good, before you tie your knot. If not, give it a nice little yank so that it's nice and tight. And then you can sew through and tie knots on the center um, thread bridges as much as you want. That one's a little tight, so I think I'll go down through here. And then up through here. I'll tie a knot here because I know I can grab this thread bridge, or at least I should be able to. There we go. Tie a knot. And then I'll just sew through a couple more columns and tie this off. Right here, I'm going to tie this off and straighten my piece out since I just mangled the heck out of it doing that. So now I'm just going to grab my thread zapper. Uh, I prefer a lighter thread zapper to me. I, I changed the battery and it did help, but it really wasn't working very good for me. And then I'm just going to melt this down like so. And call this edge finished. Now this one needs to be a little flexible so that you can put your clasping through it the way I'm going to show you to make it. Of course you don't have to do your clasping this way. You can just put a regular toggle clasp on. Just don't put this part on and figure out a way to put a toggle on whatever you want to do. You don't have to do it the way I'm going to do it but um, I just thought it would be a unique way of doing things. So now we're going to come to this side. Go ahead and extend your fire line close to your piece if you did not leave a long tail. If you, if you left a long tail, put your needle on. Otherwise, extend your fire line or your nano fill, whatever you're using, and put your needle on that and we'll be back. Okay, so now I have extended my fire line. I'm coming out of the very last column here where we left for our tail. And I am going to pick up two 15 0 seed beads and I'm going to go into the next column. So let's turn this over just so we can see the columns. And we're going to go into this column. Just two beads down. If you have to, you can go three beads down. Or just one, just whatever your needle will fit through. Mine is going well with two. So then I am going to come back up into the next column right here. I'm going to pick up two 15 0 seed beads, hoping my extension is going to go through there. It should. I made it small enough. There we go. And then go back through the previous column here. And then I'm going to come back into this column here. Now we're going to be working our clasping through these two center columns right here. These 15 0s are just going to cover 
the thread like on this end. I'll show you how neat that turned out. So you don't see my thread so much and it makes a nice pretty little finish. That's what these are going to do. Now we're going to start doing our um, two column herringbone um, square stitch combination thing again here. So I picked up two beads. I am going to go in, I'm coming out of this column, I'm going to go into the two beads on this column. Like I said, if you need to go through all three, that's fine too. But the way mine is positioned, the bottom of these beads are open nice so I can just go through two. Now I'm going to come up through all three on this side. So just cross your thread over it, come up through all three. Then just go into the neighboring bead of the new beads you put on. So you're going into the one next to the one you're coming out of. And pull your thread through. Then go back up through the first one you put on. Here. Just like we were doing for the longer columns on the side of our units here. Now we're going to do this. And we're going to do this. Let me look at my original here. One, two, three, four. Um, columns deep, so four beads deep. So we're going to do four units here. Pick up another one. And just to secure this better, I'm going to go ahead and go through both for this next one too. Both beads on the back here. And I'm going to go ahead and come up all four of them here just to make sure I have a nice secure attachment because this is going to get some pulling on it. Now I'm going to go back, I'm going to cross over, go back through the first or the second bead on my new addition here and then back up through the first one from the bottom. And I'm going to do this two more times. And I'm just going to attach to the top beads now. I'm not going to sew all the way through. Pull these nice and tight, go back through And secure these two. Now I know this seems like an awfully lot to have to do, but this bracelet is more than worth it. It's substantial, it's very strong, and it looks really um, high grade. It's just really nice once you okay, get it finished. So now we're coming out of this bead here. What we're going to do is we're going to pick up an 8 0 seed bead and an 11 0 seed bead actually two 11 O's and then you're going to pick up one of your larger pearls your six millimeter you're going to go through the pearl and bring this down to the top of the herringbone looking piece here and then pick up a 15 O seed bead drop it down go back through the pearl Go back through the two 11 O's and the 8 O, like so. Let me pull this. I'm going to just do this as carefully as I can. Pull it tight. And then I'm going to go back through this column. So I'm anchored to this column. I'm going to go back through this column. And I'm going to go back through all of them and the ones on my um, bracelet the main body of my work. Then I'm going to come back through again just because I want this anchored really well on my first stitch. We won't go through this many on the rest of it, but we really want a good anchor. Okay, so this is what you should have. Now just come through the 8 seed bead here and just the 8 the one standing up at the end here, like so. Pick up one 11 0 seed bead and one pearl and one 15 0 and drop this down. Okay. 
go back through the 15 or around the 15 o back through the purl into the 11 o and then into your 8 o that's standing up on the end here and then you want to go into these 8 o's here and go down at least three of them you can go down all of them if you'd like but at least three of them and then come back up cross over come back up come back up through the 8 o seed bead pick up an 11 o one pearl one fifteen o drop it down and do the same thing go around the 15 o into the um, pearl and the 11 o and the standing up 8 o and then pull through now you're going to go back into your herringbone stitch and go all the way down all of them if you'd like we're just going to bury it on each one I'm not going into the bracelet ones but I'm going into all of the herringbone ones coming back up through and then I'm going to go back up through this 8 seed bead and we're going to do that two more times with the 11 o the one pearl and the 15 o coming back through and then just anchor it to your um, stitch here so to your herringbone stitch you can go through two or you can go through three or you can go through all four however you want to anchor them and then after you have put on your last one go ahead and sew through all four of them and I'll be back to show you how to knot off so two more with one 11 o, one pearl and one 15 o and we'll be kind back Dis distribute your beads around the longer bead the best you can so that it looks kind of like a cluster like this and then once you have finished your last one come through your column up towards your right side and then turn your piece over go into the two beads underneath your extension that you made and then come up through this one and this will position us to put the 15 O's on this side of the bracelet come up through these two try to avoid the 8 O's on the extension and then pick up two 15 O seed beads like so and go into the next 8 o and pull and don't get caught on your cluster because you will pull those down and then go into the next set pick up two 15 o seed beads go back into the column before that one and pull now your end is finished I'm going to just sew down into a few beads here if I can get in there actually I think I'm going to come up and come up and grab this thread bridge here Make sure you don't mess up your embellishment with your 15 O's as you do this. And when you make your loop and pull it through, actually make a knot. I did not. Let's do that again. So I'm going underneath the thread bridge of the two 8 O's there in my um, main body of my work. And then I'm just going to pull this underneath my 15 O's. Not off however you can. You don't have to do it exactly how I've done it. I'm just going to sew down some beads and grab a thread bridge, make a knot, and then I'll sew down a few more. 
and then I'll straighten my piece out because as you do this you always mangle it a little, a little bit. Here I'm just going to go ahead and grab my thread zapper and cut this off and burn down my thread. You can use a lighter of course however you normally do it is fine then just kind of straighten everything out so that it's nice and neat that's what your end should okay. look like. And so this is what it looks like on the wrist it takes a little manipulation to get the pearls through but once you do it stays pretty nicely and just arrange it and then it, it stays on here really well so that's what that looks like this is what the rest of the bracelet looks like it's really quite pretty. Then when you want to take it off, just take an edge, pu push one pearl through, and then push the rest through. When you put it on, put just a couple through, like so, and then push the rest through, like so. So you just have to go at an angle, and you can get it on and off fairly easily. And that's how it looks.